Magandang araw, future researchers! Kumusta kayo? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Tinay, ang gagabay sa inyo sa inyong research journey. bago lamang sa ating channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell para ma-notify naman kayo sa ating mga susunod pang i-upload na bagong vlog about research. In our previous lesson vlog, we discuss about the first basic science process skill which is observation. And from that lesson vlog, napag-aralan natin ang two types of observation under hypothetical theory which are the stage observation and the natural observation. In this lesson vlog in Research 1, we're going to proceed with part 2 of our discussion about observation and for today's lesson vlog, we're going to differentiate the two types of observation under collection of data in scientific method and they are the quantitative observation and the qualitative observation. Qualitative versus quantitative. Ano ang pinagkaiba ng dalawa? Sa lesson na to, pag-aaralan natin what is the difference between a quantitative observation and the quantitative observation. Qualitative observation from the word quality meaning to say we are dealing with descriptions and characteristics of a certain object. And when we say quantitative observation from the word quantity, it deals with numbers. So, ano ba ang mga examples na mga qualitative observations and the quantitative observations? Let's start with qualitative observation. So, for example, I ask you to observe this thing. Okay. So, I am holding right now a skin white lotion. Skin white, baka naman. Okay, so pwede mong sabihin na this product that I am holding right now is color pink and white. Okay, pwede mo ring sabihin na it is very mabango. Okay, it has a pleasant odor, uh, smooth, and based from the observation that you have given, what kind of observation did we get? We can say that it is included in qualitative observation since it includes the smell, the attractiveness, uh, the physical description. Qualitative observation. If a scientist conducts an experiment that involves observations as to the nature of what has occurred in an experiment, qualitative observation or data is considered. Examples are the shapes of apples that fall from a balcony or tree, or what happened to them when they fall. Qualitative findings can easily be rejected in experiments requiring hard mathematical data, but are nevertheless made. This can be very important in studies that require interpretation. There are various ways we can observe things. We often use numbers in our observations, but we can also make observations using our senses. These are called the qualitative observations. Again, what is a qualitative observation? Let's say you are observing the leaf of a plant and you write down these observations. The leaf is yellow-green in color, has spiky edges, a waxy surface, and is very large and smells bitter. This type of observation is what we call a qualitative observation. Qualitative observation deals with the data that can be observed with our senses, sight, smell, touch, taste, and hearing. They do not involve measurements of numbers. For instance, colors, shapes, and textures of objects are all qualitative observations. Take a look at a photo of this tree. Use your senses to list some qualitative observations. You can say that the twigs are angled and a bit twisted. The leaves are green and have pointed tips. The fruit is orange in color and somewhat oval. All these are qualitative observations using our sight. 
Do you ever watch police dramas or crime-based TV shows? Detectives go to a crime scene, take pictures, and make observations that may very well be the key to catching the criminal. Using our senses, we can make qualitative observations of the photo of this crime scene. Let us now proceed with another type of observation which is the quantitative observation. When we say quantitative observation, it deals with numbers. And quantitative observation, there are two types of quantitative observations and they are the continuous or measured and the other one is the discrete or counted. Quantitative observation. In a scientific method, after a scientist has come up with a hypothesis based on the observation of something in nature, an experiment starts. It must be observed once the experiment is underway. The scientist reports the results of the experiment and collects the data. One type of data collection during this process is quantitative. This method of observation during the experiment uses mathematical models and relies on the scientists to collect information based on numbers, such as how many apples fell from a tree or any height. Quantitative observations are made with instruments such as rulers, balances, graduated cylinders, beakers, and thermometers. These results are measurable. Quantitative observation is an objective collection of data which is primarily focused on numbers and values. It suggests associated to, of, or depicted in terms of a quantity. Results of quantitative observation are derived using statistical and numerical analysis methods. It implies observation of any entity that can be associated with a numeric value such as age, weight, volume, scale, etc. difference between continuous and discrete data. Okay, unahin muna natin ang continuous or tinatawag natin na measured data. So, pag sinabi natin counted or measured data, it could be divided into finer or it can be reduced into finer and finer things or level. For example, we have length, the width, the height, uh, the distance, or the weight. So, paano siya naging continuous or measured? So, di ba kapag hinahanap natin or kinukuha natin ang weight ng isang object, pwede natin sabihin na siya ay 26.7 kilograms. Pwede rin natin sabihin na ang height ng isang tao ay 152.2 centimeters. Pwede natin sabihin na ang distance between uh, Manila and Lucena ay 129.8 Kilometers. Another example, the length. The length of the table is 1.62 meters. Okay, anong palatandaan para natin masabi na these data are considered as continuous or measured? So, pwede nating sabihin na meron siyang decimal point kasi nga pwede siyang magdere-derecho. And when we say continuous or measured, it can be reduced into finer and finer level. So, meaning to say, uh, it is possible that we can obtain a data that has decimal point. Another thing about continuous and measured data, it can be precise and accurate. Kasi nga, pwede nga tayong magkaroon ng decimal point. Let us proceed now with the second type of quantitative data, which is the discrete and counted. So when we say discrete or counted, it cannot be precise. Why? What are the examples of discrete and counted data? Okay, for example, number of tables, number of siblings, ano pa? number of students, or number of books in the library. So, paano siya naging counted or discrete numbers? Okay, let us say, for example, number of siblings. Pag tinanong kita, ilan kayong magkakapatid? Di ba ang sinasagot mo lang ay whole number palagi na sasabihin mo, ah, 3, 2, 1, or 5. So, hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin na meron po akong 2.5 na kapatid. Ano yun? Yung isa ay kakalahati. <laughs> Diba? So, when we say discrete or counted numbers, it is always in whole number. Okay, another example, number of books in the library. Wala tayong sinabi na, ma'am, there are 3,462.2. 
or 365.5 books in the library. Bakit nagkaroon ng 5? So, ibig sabihin ba nun, yung isang book ay kakalhati? So, wala, di ba? So, ayan. Kaya pag sinabi natin discrete or counted, lagi lang siyang whole number. Another thing that you should consider about quantitative data and qualitative data, when we say qualitative data, commonly we are just using our five senses. Sense of hearing, sense of seeing, sense of touch, sense of smelling, and sense of taste. Because we are only dealing with descriptions and characteristics of a certain object. But when we are dealing with quantitative data, we are dealing with numbers. The reason why we are using different laboratory instruments. We can use thermometer, we can use beaker for the volume, we can use tape measure, or we can use ruler to measure the length of a certain object. Okay, again, to generalize the topic that we have today, what are the two types of collection of data under scientific method? We have the quantitative data and the qualitative data. And under the quantitative data, we have discrete or counted and measured and continuous. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Sana ay may natutunan kayo. For our next lesson vlog, we're going to discuss about the second type or uh, the second basic science process skill which is measuring. Okay, stay tuned on our YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Tin May. Ang kasama nyo sa inyong research journey. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates and lesson vlog in research. See you on our... See you on my next vlog. Bye!